Welcome to Disneyland. Let's eat some vegan food. These are the options to the best of my knowledge as of June 2019. Please be aware that I try to update as thoroughly as I can, but the food options change regularly at the Disneyland Resort, so the information becomes out of date at some point. Please check the main page of this channel and my blog, happiestveganonearth.com, if you are watching this more than a couple of months in the future, and use the most current version of the blog post or the video guide so that you have the most accurate info when you visit the park. So the first thing you'll see when you walk into the park on Main Street is the popcorn carts and the fresh popcorn made all around the park both Disneyland and DCA is vegan. It's made with coconut oil and canola oil and you can go on my blog post to see a list of the ingredients for that. The Mickey pretzels at the pretzel carts all around the parks are also vegan. Just make sure to get the version without the cheese sauce and then you can get some mustard packets instead if you prefer and you can see the ingredients list for those pretzels on my blog. At this pretzel cart in Frontierland, and also at the one near Small World, they also have a cinnamon sugar pretzel. So I have the ingredients list for that on my blog as well, and then they add the cinnamon and sugar afterwards. So you won't see the cinnamon and sugar on the ingredients list, but that is added afterwards. And this is the one that is not stuffed with cream cheese. It has an optional cream cheese dip, but all you have to do is order it without that, and then it's vegan. So just be careful at all of the other pretzel carts besides Frontierland and Small World because those ones will actually be stuffed with cream cheese. So the amazing thing about this pretzel is that it tastes just like eating a churro. So the churros at Disneyland and DCA are not vegan. They contain both milk and eggs and you can see the ingredients list for that on my blog. But we don't even need to eat churros because we have the cinnamon sugar pretzel that's basically like eating the same thing. So if you've missed having Disneyland churros since going vegan, I can highly recommend this cinnamon sugar pretzel. And also at Rancho del Socolo, they have cinnamon sugar crisps that are very much like eating a churro as well. So we'll go over those a little later. So now let's head back up Main Street and go to Carnation Cafe. They have breakfast, lunch, and dinner here. So for breakfast, you can ask your server for the vegan Mickey waffles and the vegan pancakes. These are the allergy version, so they are both vegan and gluten-free, and they are made with rice flour. They are a bit of a different consistency than they would be if they were made with regular wheat flour, so just be prepared for that. It can really depend on how that particular chef cooks them, so sometimes they are a bit soft on the inside. I have also been able to get roast potatoes in the past, but I think they aren't always prepared to do this. So you can ask, but they might not do it. And they also can make you soy lattes, cappuccinos, etc. because they keep soy milk in stock, and also they can bring you soy milk to go with your coffee. For lunch and dinner, they have the Chef's Vegan Burger. And this is actually the first time they ever used the word vegan on a menu at Disneyland. So this one's been around for quite a while. And it's sort of a standard veggie burger. It's a house-made burger that's with beans, corn, zucchini, etc. Their french fries are made in a shared fryer, so ask for a fruit as a substitute if you prefer to avoid shared fryers. With any restaurant at Disneyland that is a table service restaurant, such as Carnation Cafe, I highly recommend making a reservation in advance. If it's not too busy, you might be lucky and be able to get a table as a walk-up. But if you know you're going to go in advance, it's a good idea to just make a reservation. Across the street from Carnation Cafe, you will see the Market House, which is actually a Starbucks, and there you can find all sorts of vegan drinks. They have coconut milk and soy milk and almond milk, so basically all of the drinks can be made vegan when you choose those, but some of the syrups have dairy in them, so it's too many things to go over here, but if you Google vegan at Starbucks, you will find a comprehensive list of all of the current options. And just outside of the market house is this little street called Center Street, and it's usually where the flower market is set up, and there's a fruit stand over here as well. And it's a really beautiful little area where you can sit and drink your coffee and relax, and also pick up some fruit. So let's go see what is available here at the Center Street fruit cart. We have pineapple spears, watermelon, and then we have mango slices. Um, the caramel dipping sauce with those apples does contain milk because there is often milk in caramel so just watch out for that and then we also have hummus over here this is going to be a very similar setup to all the different fruit carts all around disneyland and dca so we've got this um, applesauce that's vegan and um we'll look at the ingredients on the hummus and that one is vegan of course from sabra they also have a guacamole and chips in a very similar package that is vegan and then over here we have the pickles, so they put the ingredients list right on the sign right there, so that's easy to tell that it's vegan. And those are just the plain ones, they have various flavors around. And we have the cuties, the little mandarin oranges, we've got some various drinks over here, and then we've got some bananas, and some apples that are sadly wrapped in plastic, and then we've got more cuties. And then we've got some freeze-dried apples, so the entire ingredients list on that is just Fuji apples. And then over here we've got some regular plain lays that are vegan, just potatoes and salt and oil. So now let's head up Main Street to Plaza Inn, and here they have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and the breakfast is actually a character buffet, so you definitely need reservations for this one because it has all the characters come around to meet you and it does fill up quickly. 
the vegan Mickey waffles aren't the ones on that buffet. The ones on the buffet aren't vegan. So you just ask your server and they will have a chef make you a batch of the vegan version of the Mickey waffles. And then you can always ask for more when you're done because it's a buffet. And then they have some fruit toppings that you can put on your Mickey waffles. For example, this like, strawberry topping. And then they have the um, hash browns that are vegan and then lots of coffee and fruit. For lunch and dinner, they have a pasta with marinara sauce. Just omit the Parmesan cheese that normally comes on top of it. On the day I went last time, the cast members were unsure about whether their bread sips were vegan. They couldn't give me the ingredients, so they offered me applesauce or carrots instead. But people have been told that those are vegan, so just double check when you're there. This isn't a very impressive dish, but if the rest of your party really wants to eat there, you can certainly get a full belly. You can see here that for lunch and dinner, this place actually turns into a counter service or cafeteria style place. So for breakfast, you do need to have a reservation because it's a character buffet, but for lunch and dinner, you just walk up and order. There's no reservations. So even though Plaza Inn doesn't have the best food at Disneyland, it's actually kind of a cool place to eat because it's a historic place. It was Walt's favorite place to eat. That's his favorite table, according to a cast member I talked to last time. And also these are the original curtains from back when Walt was here, and it's such a beautiful place. So hopefully one day the food will be as impressive as the interior. Now let's head over to Jolly Holiday Bakery Cafe. Here the vegan entree for lunch and dinner is the grilled vegetable and whole grain salad and it's described on the menu as seasonal vegetables, mixed greens, barley, spelled with basil vinaigrette and a fresh breadstick, but just make sure to ask for no breadstick because it actually has cheese baked onto it. But they can substitute their house-made chips which are excellent and the chef told me that the veggies are cooked in oil but they can't guarantee 100% that there isn't cross-contamination within the kitchen. That basil vinaigrette dressing is vegan, so the only substitution you need to do is to ask for chips instead of the breadstick. They also make espresso drinks here, lattes, cappuccinos, etc. And they keep some soy milk in stock, so you can get, for example, what you see here, a soy latte. And then as you continue along, you turn left into Adventureland, and the first thing you see on your left is the Tiki Juice Bar, and it offers Dole Whips in pineapple flavor. And actually, all of the Dole Whip flavors are vegan, and you can read the ingredients list for those on the Dole website. So here at the Tiki Juice Bar, you can get the Pineapple Dole Whip, which is just the soft serve, or a Dole Float, which is pineapple juice with soft serve on top, or just a pineapple spear. And if you're into spicy, you can ask the cast member for a packet of tahini, which is a spice mix of chili, lime, and salt, and it's super delicious on all types of fruit. If you want to skip the line for your Dole Whip, you can just use the Disneyland app to do a mobile order and then pick it up here on the inside. This used to be another line on the inside, but now this is just the mobile order pickup area. On the other side of the Tiki Room, we have the Tropical Hideaway, and here we have the Pineapple Dole Whips, just like at the Tiki Juice Bar, but there are also two other flavors of Dole Whip, which are orange and raspberry, and so here you can get your Dole Whip in three flavors, either one of the flavors by itself, or you can get a swirl of any of those two flavors, and then you can also do the Dole Whip Float, which is the pineapple juice, with any flavor of Dole Whip or a swirl of two flavors, and then you can get the Loaded Whip, which is any flavor of Dole Whip or a swirl of two Dole Whips, topped with toasted coconut, crystallized hibiscus, pineapple pieces, tangerine, and jackfruit, so just a bed of exotic fruits. And then um, you omit the Pocky cookie sticks to make it vegan. So it normally comes with these um, Pocky sticks sort of stuck in there, but you just say no Pocky sticks and it is vegan. So these bao buns that you see on the sign right here, they do actually have a vegetable one, but the chef showed me the binder with the ingredients list in the dough and the dough does contain dairy. So those ones cannot be made vegan. So now let's have a look around to see what else is vegan. We have waters and sodas and coconut water and juice over here. And then over here we have a couple of different flavors of hip peas. So these are sort of snacks made of chickpeas. And that one is vegan white cheddar. It's always so exciting to see the word vegan on the front of a package. And then they also have the sriracha sunshine flavor. It doesn't say vegan on the front of the package sort of because it doesn't need to because cheddar means um, they have to really specify that it's vegan. But if you read the back of the ingredients list for the sriracha sunshine, it is definitely vegan. And then down here we have some plantain chips and they have a little ingredients list there, very small underneath the word salted plantain chips, but it's just the plantain chips and the oil and the salt. And then here we have some baked lays, which are vegan as well. And then that's just the one flavor that's vegan and the other one has milk because it's sort of sour cream onion flavor. But these are sort of plain flavor of Maui style chips and these have milk in them. That is totally inexplicable. And then salt and vinegar lays are vegan though. No, no funny business going on there. So now we'll come over here to this chilled ramen shaker salad. This is unfortunately not vegan because the noodles have egg in them. The first day I came here back in December, they had an ingredients list that did not have egg in it. And then it changed very quickly to having egg in it. So maybe it was mislabeled that first day or maybe they changed the 
brand of the noodles very quickly, but it seems to always have egg in it now. So maybe they'll change it to a brand that doesn't have egg in it soon. So you can see this is actually a really beautiful location. They have lots of seating and it's really relaxing to just sit here and watch the jungle cruise boats go by and then listen to Rosita, who is the cockatoo over there, and she'll tell you some jokes. Over here across from the jungle cruise, we have a fruit stand and they have a few unique items over here. So the first thing is um, the hummus trio, but this is actually not vegan. So you would think because it's hummus, it would be vegan, but you have to be very careful because one of these hummuses actually has feta cheese in it. And so it's all prepared at once. You can't get it vegan. This is pretty uncool because I feel like as vegans, we own hummus. Hummus belongs to us and to put cheese in hummus. Well, that's just silly. But right here we have strawberries with chocolate dipping sauce, and these are at several of the fruit carts around the parks, and the chocolate dipping sauce is actually just Hershey's syrup, so you can read the ingredients list right there on the packaging, and that one is vegan. So then over here we have some watermelon, and the apples with caramel dipping sauce, which are not vegan because they contain milk in the caramel sauce, and then the mangoes with tahini, which are vegan. Then we've got juices and coconut waters in a couple of different flavors, and then the Blue Sky sodas over here, and then the overnight oats, which have actually sold out at this particular moment in this clip because they put them out in the morning, and then usually sometime in the afternoon they sell out. So those are vegan, actually. They use almond milk, and then when they are there, you can read the ingredients list, or you can look at my blog to read the ingredients list of those as well. I do really enjoy those overnight oats. We got some pineapple spears and some grapes over here, more bananas and apples, and then a huge bucket of pickles. So they got some spicy ones and the various flavors here and you can read the ingredients on the little sign. And then on this side we've got some more chips. These are Stacy's pita chips and reading the ingredients list these ones appear to be vegan. And then over here we have some more of these fruit crisps which are actually just freeze-dried Fuji apples. And right next to that little fruit stand they have the bingo barbecue. And here you can get veggie skewers either on their own or as a combination plate with rice and citrus miso slop. They're all made on a shared grill with the meat, so just be careful about that depending on how you feel about shared grills. They also have this jungle julep, which is delicious. It's a slushy of grape, orange, lemon, and pineapple juice with grenadine, and it is super refreshing. They also have a summer special right now, which is a poke bowl, and it looked to me like that would be vegan if the tuna were left off. But I asked the chef, and she said that they can't make any modifications on that, so I'll save you the time of standing in line to ask that question again. Bingo Barbecue usually has quite a long line, so mobile order is definitely recommended for this one. Now let's head into Frontierland where there is Rancho del Socolo and this is one of the most vegan friendly restaurants in the park so there are two really good vegan options here. One is the tostada salad and I know it doesn't look like much but on the bottom there's a huge layer of refried beans so it's actually super filling and sometimes I can't even finish it all. And they have this crunchy shell which is my absolute favorite. And then you ask for extra guacamole and grilled veggies if you like. Just say no meat and no cheese and that's the vegan version. And then you can see all the different toppings they have there and add whatever you like of the different salsas and things they have. And then the other really great vegan option is the cauliflower tacos with avocado pasilla crema and I'm currently obsessed with these. They are super delicious and I've been getting them all the time. And they are vegan by default, just make sure that they don't sprinkle cheese on top of the rice and beans. So you can get it either with rice and beans as a side, but um, originally when they first brought out this dish it was with the tortilla chips as a side. So you can do either, but if you do the rice and beans just make sure they don't sprinkle any cheese on top of the beans. Personally, I really prefer the version with the rice and beans because I find that it's a more balanced filling meal. Please excuse the poor lighting in this clip. This is at nighttime. I'm having these after dark, but they are much prettier in the daytime, I assure you. And then a few more vegan options here. We have that Jamaica Freeze, which is a hibiscus slushy, and that one is vegan. And then we have these crispy chips con limon, and they have the ingredients list on the bottom there, and these are vegan. And then there is the other flavor of chips, which is the cinnamon crisps, and they have the ingredients just on the bottom of the bag as well. And these are ridiculously good because they taste just like a churro, and it's so cool because we don't even need churros because we got both the cinnamon sugar pretzel and the cinnamon crisps at Rancho del Socolo. And what you see here is the honeydew agua fresca, which is a summer special, and it is so refreshing and so perfect, I can't recommend it enough. It's just like the juiciest, most perfect honeydew that you ever tasted. It's not too sweet, it's just the perfect thing. And every time I walk by Rancho del Socolo, I'm getting one of these, as long as it's still on the specials menu. You'll notice that I have my reusable steel straw here. I always bring that along with my steel spork. And you could also just bring a fork and a spoon from home if you like to cut down on that plastic waste and make sure that whenever you get those plastic cups that they go into the mixed recycling containers. 
Now let's head into New Orleans Square and at the Royal Street Veranda they have one of the OG vegan options at Disneyland which is the vegetarian gumbo. So it says vegetarian on the menu board but it's actually vegan. If you go to City Hall they have this recipe for the gumbo that contains butter but that's not a real recipe. Those are very old recipes and those are just sort of souvenirs. If you ask the cast members and the leads and the chefs here they will all say that this gumbo is actually vegan. It is not just vegetarian and there have been times where people say that um, they start to brush the bread with butter but this is rare um, and just double check in case they're doing that on the day that you were there but it's never happened to me. It is served in a sourdough bread bowl which is vegan and then on rare occasions when they run out of the sourdough bread bowl they actually serve it in a french bread which is vegan as well. And over here we have some packets of Tabasco if you would like to spice up your gumbo. Next we have Riverbell Terrace which is table service reservations recommended and they have breakfast lunch and dinner so for breakfast there isn't anything vegan on the regular menu but on the secret menu they sometimes have vegan pancakes but it appears that they're not always available so have a backup in mind just in case they don't have them. Your best bet here for lunch and dinner is the barbecue tofu. You can get it either as a part of the Riverbell's chopped salad or as an entree with two sides so there are two formats to be getting this barbecue tofu in. Uh, the tofu is normally cooked in a shared fryer but they can bake it separately for you if you ask. So on my blog you can see photos of it in the baked form and then also in the fried form and I very much prefer the fried form so if you don't mind shared fryers it tastes a lot better when it's fried because when it's baked it's just barely baked and the barbecue sauce doesn't really stick. So when you get the barbecue tofu as an entree as opposed to as part of the salad you have to pick two sides and the last time I went, which was March 2019, the server told me that the vegan sides are now the steamed veggies and the baked beans, but make sure to check with your server which sides are vegan because this can change from time to time. And then the other version with the barbecue tofu is the chopped salad and then the barbecue tofu on top of that. And then all you need to do is switch out the ranch dressing that it normally comes with for apple vinaigrette instead. And then normally it comes with fried onions and these are made in the shared fryer, but they don't have any egg batter or anything like that. So whether you get the fried onions is just a matter of how you feel about shared fryers. This is actually my preferred way to experience this tofu as opposed to the entree with two sides just because I feel like you get more and it's more interesting with different flavors. There's some beans in that salad too. Super delicious. So now let's go over to the French market and here they have the veggie jambalaya which is actually vegan. So it's the vegan jambalaya and it's off menu. It's a secret menu item but if you ask the cast members they will be happy to bring you some. It's not a huge portion, so if you're very hungry, I would either suggest getting a fruit plate as well, as you see in this photo, or other people have been able to do this. I haven't tried it out myself yet, but you can ask for the jambalaya to be served in a sourdough bread bowl, like the gumbo, and that makes it much more filling as well. Out here is the seating for French Market, and you see there's quite a lot of seating, so sometimes when you get a gumbo and there's not enough seating over by the Royal Street Veranda, you can actually find some seating over here to eat your gumbo, but sometimes this tends to fill up as well, so one other option to eat your gumbo is actually at the Golden Horseshoe. There's usually quite a lot of seating in there. And adjacent to this seating area is the mint julep bar, and here they serve mint juleps and beignets. Unfortunately, they don't have any vegan beignets here like they do at Walt Disney World, and I always keep asking every time I go, but as of June 2019, there are no alternative beignets for allergies or anything. But of course, the mint juleps here are vegan. I asked whether there was honey or any other sneaky animal products in the mint julep, and they did show me the ingredients list a while back, and it is definitely vegan. Also, they have a special right now. It's sort of the summer seasonal mint julep. It is the watermelon mint julep. I really enjoyed it. I like anything with watermelon, so this one was an easy sell for me. I have heard that it's supposed to have tahini on it, which would give it a little kick, but I think they forgot to put that on mine. Or I'm so desensitized to tahini that it wasn't enough for me to notice. And then over here we have Cafe Orleans. So for lunch and dinner, you can get the house salad with no cheese and no candied pecans, which contain dairy. And then the french fries, you can just get those with no cheese and then switch up the sauce for the ketchup. And then they have a vegan entree that should be vegan as is. It's called the vegetable bolognese. And the menu doesn't say anything about cheese. It just says zucchini, yellow squash, eggplant, and ratatouille sauce. And so I always just say no cheese just in case since this is a sort of dish that I could see having random cheese on the top of it, but it's supposed to be vegan as is. This is one of the healthier vegan options in the park, so definitely give this one a try if you're in a healthy mood, but if you want something more decadent, a little more fun and interesting, then I probably wouldn't recommend this one. Over here at the Blue Bayou, there's nothing vegan on the regular menu, but they have a secret menu item, an off-menu vegan pasta dish that they will make you if you ask. On the regular menu, there is a vegetarian pasta dish, but it's made with egg noodles and cheese, and so the vegan version is with different noodles and some added veggies. It does taste pretty good, but it's $30 and doesn't really seem to match that price point. 
but I think that's the case with everything on the menu at Blue Bayou. Even meat eaters tend to say that this restaurant isn't the best and that you're paying for the ambiance, not for the food, because of course it's inside the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction. Also, if you ask about vegan dessert options, they have on the secret menu several sorbet flavors, and it depends on which day you're there. So last time I went, they had mango, kiwi, and pear sorbets, and so I went with the pear is what you see here. If you do want to eat here, a reservation is a must because it is always booked far in advance. Now let's go to Critter Country where they have the Hungry Bear restaurant. Recently they changed up the burger here, so it used to be Messy Melvin's Vegan Burger, which was a Beyond Burger with stewed tomatoes on top, and now it is the classic plant-based cheeseburger, which is supposed to be an impossible burger with a slice of chow cheese and a house-made vegan sauce, sort of a Thousand Island sauce, and lettuce. And then the menu board actually says contains no animal meat, dairy, eggs, or honey, which is awesome because that means it's vegan with no modifications. And it comes with either fries or house slaw. And the slaw, the coleslaw, is a vinegar-based coleslaw that is vegan. But there has been a shortage of Impossible Burgers lately. So depending on when you're watching this, you may get either an Impossible Burger or a Beyond Burger. And whenever the shortage of the Impossible Burger is over, then this will change from the Beyond Burger back again into the Impossible Burger. But even if you're getting a Beyond Patty instead of an Impossible Patty, the rest of the burger will still be the same. So you'll have the Beyond Patty, the chow cheese, and the same vegan sauce, so it won't be like the old version of the Messy Melvin. It'll still be this new classic plant-based cheeseburger. Everything will be the same except for the Beyond Patty instead of the Impossible Patty. Also over here in Critter Country we have Harbor Galley, and that has had some vegan specials in the past. There was a vegan hot diggity dog, which was a field roast hot dog with some lentil chili on top, and then we were able to get the lentil chili in the bread bowl for a while, but those specials are now over, and this place does not have any vegan options at the moment, but hopefully they will bring back some vegan options soon. And then just past Harbor Galley, across from the Splash Mountain attraction, we have another fruit cart and we got all of the drinks and we got some pickles here. And then um, obviously that veggie cup with the ranch has milk in it, so that one's not vegan. And then we've got some grapes and all the usual fruits here. And then we've got some orange juice and lemonade. And then over on this side, we have more fruit, some whole fruit. At least the oranges aren't wrapped in plastic, that's good. And there are also these craisins, which are just dried cranberries and sugar. And then above that you see these fruit crisps again, which are just freeze-dried Fuji apples. Now let's go to the Red Rose Tavern in Fantasyland. So, the vegan option here has changed back and forth over the last couple of years, but the current version of this sandwich is called the Enchanted Cauliflower Sandwich. And it is a grilled cauliflower steak with vegan spicy lime aioli, lettuce, and stewed tomatoes on a toasted roll served with french fries. The old version of this sandwich required some modifications. You had to omit the fried green beans, which had an egg batter, and you had to switch out the cheese fries for regular fries. But this new version doesn't need any modifications. It's vegan by default. So I really enjoyed the old patty. It was sort of a samosa patty with potatoes and peas. But um, I really like this new sandwich overall because it's vegan by default and you don't have to modify anything, which is just easier for everybody. They also serve breakfast here at the Red Rose Tavern, and there's one dish that can be veganized called the Garden Vegetable Hash, and it's described on the menu as mushrooms, sun-dried tomatoes, kale, tavern potatoes, lemon bechamel sauce, and with a baked egg and a petite croissant. So you have to remove the sauce, the egg, and the croissant. The potatoes and the veggies are safe, they are sautéed in oil. It's pretty good, but after you do the modifications, I'm not really sure if it's worth the price. So, you know, it's not bad if you're really into potatoes and garlic. The last one I got was super garlicky. I will also mention quickly, this is also in Fantasyland, but sort of on the front side of the castle. It's in the Fantasy Fair area. That's that relatively new area that they added to Fantasyland. And they have Maurice's Treats there, which is a little snack cart, and they have some pastries that are not vegan, but they have some frozen lemonade drinks that are vegan. My favorite is the Rose Lemonade. They're made with those Monin syrups, and they also have a boys and apple freeze that's very popular. And then also I'll quickly mention the Golden Horseshoe and then Stage Door Cafe, which is on the other side of the building right there. They really don't have anything vegan on the menu except for you could get a side of french fries. But on the inside here you see there's a lot of seating, so you can just use that to rest and hang out, or you can bring your gumbo over here if the seating is full in the areas that are closer to that. Now let's head over to Tomorrowland where they have Alien Pizza Planet, formerly known as Red Rocket's Pizza Port. And this is very similar to the Boardwalk Pizza and Pasta restaurant that they have in California Adventure. You can ask them to make you a personal pizza with vegan cheese, which is Daya or Daya vegan cheese, and it comes on a gluten-free and vegan crust. This is a secret menu item, so you have to know to ask for it. 
They generally refuse to add any veggies to top this pizza here in Tomorrowland, but if you ask for the same thing in California Adventure at Boardwalk Pizza and Pasta, they will generally do that for you. But it's usually quite good with just the diet cheese if you're in the mood for pizza. Also, they have the Terra Nova vegetable pasta, which is super easy to veganize. All you have to do is tell them not to put the Parmesan cheese on top. And then, if you prefer, you can actually get them to give you a little cup of Dea or Daya mozzarella cheese to mix in or put on top as well. Over here at the salad station, they have a salad called the Nebula Noodle Salad, and it looks like it would be vegan if you leave off the chicken, except for those noodles are in a dressing, and they make it in big batches in the morning, and that dressing has fish sauce in it. So there's no way to make this one vegan because it always has fish sauce in it. At Galactic Grill, they have a veggie wrap on the menu that seems promising, but the problem is that they are made off-site and the cheese is already in them, so they can't make them without the cheese, unfortunately. But on the secret menu, they do actually have veggie burgers, and it's a vegan garden burger patty on a regular vegan bun that they use throughout the parks, and the fries are in a dedicated non-shared fryer. Also, they have one of these filtered water stations where you can refill your reusable water bottles. So I made a whole video on where to find those and I need to do it again because there are a bunch more now that Star Wars Land is opened. And then this is the fruit cart in Tomorrowland. And of course it has a lot of the same things you'll see at the other fruit carts. For example, this Sabra hummus with pretzel crackers. But we have a few things at this cart that I don't see much at the other carts. For example, there's some watermelon that's sort of chopped up already in a fruit cup and then we have some sliced oranges as opposed to the whole oranges and then also some sliced up cucumbers so make sure to put all of these in the mixed recycling containers if you get them already sliced up in the plastic and then we also see here the strawberries and chocolate dipping sauce that we've seen elsewhere in the parks with the ingredients list on there it's Hershey's chocolate sauce again now let's head over to Toontown real quick. Toontown is not known for its good food and it's especially not known for its good vegan food. So we have these three little quick service locations and they have sort of hot dogs and pizzas and things, but nothing vegan. But they do have a fruit cart where you'll find all the same options that we've seen elsewhere. So the hummus and pretzels and the various fruits and things like that. Also throughout the carts, you'll find these cotton candy and ice cream carts. So the cotton candy is vegan, it's just the sugar and the dyes. And then we have a couple of the fruit bars. So we have Olaf's, frozen strawberry lemonade bar and then the regular strawberry frozen bar and those are both vegan and then we have these frozen lemonades from Minute Maid and they have the pink one and the regular one those are both vegan and then we've got some lollipops at this particular one and then we have some Sour Patch Kids which are vegan they do switch up the candies at these carts from time to time so I've seen red vines there as well which are vegan and now we'll have a look through the candy shop on Main Street USA and see what's vegan here this is going to be all of the same things that you'll find at Pooh's Corner in Critter Country. So we're not going to go over Pooh's Corner in addition to this. We'll just look at the candies on Main Street and those will be all the same ones you would find back in Critter Country at Pooh's Corner. So we have these lollipops that you can find all throughout the parks and those ones are vegan. And then we come over here and more of these lollipops that we just saw on the cart. Over here we have Goofy's Candy and a lot of these are not vegan because of the gelatin in the gummy ones. So anytime they say gummy they're going to have gelatin in them. But there's one that says jelly and that one's actually with pectin and not with gelatin. So that one's vegan but these two we're looking at right here both have gelatin. But they have some that are just sort of lollipops that are just the sugar. So a couple of those are vegan. Just read the ingredients list on the back of those and look for especially gelatin, beeswax, and confectioner's glaze which is made out of insects. And then down here we have Goofy's Rock Candy, which appears to be vegan. Just read the ingredients list on that one. And then over here we have these Pixar themed candies, and a lot of these are vegan. So we have these blue raspberry jellies, and you might think they have gelatin in them, but actually it's just pectin, which is made from fruit. So that one is vegan. And then those sour apple balls actually have beeswax in them, so we're not going to look at those. These sour rainbow belts appear to be vegan. They just have palm oil, so note the palm oil. And then we have these sour strawberry belts, which are basically the same thing. They seem to be vegan, just note the palm oil. And then the cinnamon candy is an example of where we have the insects, which is the confectioner's glaze, and it actually says shellac in parentheses there, so that's a shellac beetle. And then up here we have animal crackers, and these appear to be vegan, we just have to note the palm oil, but no dairy eggs or honey in those. And then we have uh, Rice Krispie Treats, these are not vegan. Anytime there's a Rice Krispie Treat sort of thing in the park, that's always going to have gelatin because they use marshmallows with gelatin in it. But maybe in the future, they won't do that. That would be awesome. And then we have some packaged cotton candy that is vegan. And then over here we have the snacks with character. So some of these are vegan. For example, the sweet potato tortilla chips. It says vegan right on the front there. But other ones are not vegan. For example, this cranberry mix actually has milk in it because it's got chocolate in there somewhere. Um, and then they have these chocolate chip cookies and lemon cookies, but these are just gluten-free and they actually have milk and eggs in them. 
So those are not vegan, but we do have this Mountain Mambo fruit and seed mix, and this one says vegan right on the bottom of the package there, so that one's easy to identify. And then we have various snacks made by Chip and Dale. So the Mountain Mix, this one actually has milk because it has M&Ms in it, but most of the other ones from Chip and Dale are actually vegan. This is a fruit and nut mix, and that one checks out as vegan. It's just the fruits and the nuts. And then we have a giant bag of pretzels and a smaller bag of pretzels, and those pretzels are vegan. Thank goodness, can't mess up pretzels with animal products. And then we've got some little veggie chips, and those are just made of various veggies and oil. And then over here we have the various packaged popcorns, which are very different from the popcorn made at the carts that's made fresh around the parks. So this is the kettle corn, and this is the only vegan one at the moment. It's just the popcorn, sugar, sunflower oil, and salt. But all the other flavors have milk in them at the moment. They're sort of cheesy flavors. And then we've got cocoa dusted dark chocolate almonds, and those ones are vegan. And then we also want to look for the blue package, which is the dark chocolate nonpareils, but they actually seem to be out of stock of those at this particular location at the moment. But if you went to Pooh's Corner or Buena Vista Street or downtown Disney Marceline's, you would see the blue package has the dark chocolate nonpareils, which are the other vegan variety, in addition to the cocoa dusted dark chocolate almonds. So you may have noticed we didn't go into Galaxy's Edge slash Star Wars Land slash the planet of Batu. That's because I already made a separate video going over all the vegan options there. So check the link in the description below to watch the video that goes over all the vegan options in Galaxy's Edge. Please give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. I would super appreciate it. And leave me a comment below telling me what your favorite vegan option at Disneyland is. Please subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any of the content I make about all the vegan options at Disneyland. I just finished my complete guides to all the vegan options at California Adventure and at Downtown Disney, so see the description box for links to those. And as always, please check out my Instagram, at happiestveganonearth, and my blog, happiestveganonearth.com, where you can find the most up-to-date information about all the vegan options in the parks. Thanks for watching, and until next time, see you real soon!